Welcome back, everyone, to another broadcast of In the Trenches. I'm your host, Tom Workus, and today I sit down with Carrie Richards, who's the founder of Infostack.io. Infostack is a company that curates collections of premium resources and tools like software, e-courses, e-books, coupons, and more, puts them all together and offers them at extreme discounts for limited periods of time. Think of it like a hybrid between AppSumo and Humble Bundle and Groupon, and you kind of get the idea. I brought Carrie on in the trenches to talk about the first launch he ever did with his new business, InfoStack. So it was the first campaign for the first stack, quote unquote, that's what he calls these collections of premium resources. So his first stack ever, which he calls the Right Publish Profit Super Stack, and how he launched it. The reason we're focusing on his first launch ever is because in that first launch, he generated over $70,000 in seven days. And I think that's a remarkable number for somebody who's just getting started, who's doing something essentially from scratch. He has no platform. And you'll hear when I kind of go into the background of his story in today's interview, and Carrie shares how he'd been working at this for two or three years, just kind of banging his head against a wall, not getting the kind of traction or results that he would have liked to get until this particular campaign. And what's even cooler is I got the chance to work with Kerry for the three months leading up to this launch. And so I got to help him navigate the territory and navigate this crazy world of launches and help him kind of get this thing out the door successfully. So I brought him on to kind of break that down and how we kind of went about looking at that launch. And I just thought it was so cool because shortly after he did this launch, he quit his job and he's now running InfoStack full time. So this is a truly remarkable success story. Somebody who went from nothing to this really big launch, really successful campaign, and is now trying to scale this business. And honestly, that's my big takeaway from the story. There's no tactic or technique that I think is truly as remarkable as just the story of Kerry committing to and seeing this launch through to the end, and to see what a launch can do for you firsthand. For Kerry, it transformed his business, it transformed his life. He ended up quitting his job and starting moving into this full time now. So that's a life transformation if I've ever heard of one. And so I'm really excited to share this story. I think it's remarkable uh, for a number of reasons, but that was my big takeaway. And there's a lot of stuff we get into some of the nuance of this, this launch technique we used. So I think you're going to come away with a lot of specific, actionable tips and tricks and techniques that you can use for your next launch. But I do still think that the most important aspect is just the overview of how he was able to do this from scratch on such a quick time horizon and what worked for him, what made it so effective. And one thing I will say real quick before we get to the interview is the audio on Carrie's side was less than ideal. I did my best to clean it all up and, and make sure it was as easy and nice to listen to as possible. And my thought was that the content was so good, I wanted to share it no matter what. And I didn't want to have to wait to re-record this since this is so fresh. So without further ado, let's get to the conversation. So Carrie, the way I want to kick things off is give us a little bit of a background on your personal journey leading up to the founding of InfoStack. So yeah, it, it actually was quite a journey. <laughs> um, I, uh, I was thinking about it this morning and uh, I remember back in about 2008 or so, I ran into a guy at a cocktail party, literally, and he was doing something called click arbitrage. I had not, you know, had never even considered uh, being online or doing anything online. Uh, and I started talking to this guy and he, he, uh, he was explaining to me how, you know, he was making a million dollars and a half an hour kind of thing. And, uh, and he could show me how. And so I said, well, what the heck? Uh, and so I, I, I got into this thing and, and uh, it actually worked for a period of time. Uh, and basically, uh, I don't know if, uh, if, if anybody knows what quick arbitrage is, but uh, it was a little bit black hat, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but basically, we were buying clicks from Google and selling them to Yahoo. Uh, and, and, you know, it was just like anything else. It's, you know, sometimes sometimes you win, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. You'd, you, you'd make money some days and you'd lose money the next. Um, but then after about, I don't know, about three and a half, four months, uh, Google changed their algorithm, of course, as they want to do, and the whole thing quit working. <laughs> so, uh, so that was that. But that that sort of introduced me to the whole online marketing, online make money online type situation. And give me a context of that. Like when you first started, so that was like your first foray. 
what was it? What, what were, give me like maybe a general idea of like the results overall. Like you said, you made some money, lost some in the grand scheme of things. It's, it seems like it opened up your mind to the fact that you can make money online, that there are these different things that, you know, most, most people are just not aware of, but give me also context too, of like kind of where that, that led you. Was it like, I need to go find another thing like this? Or was it more like now that I've made money this way, maybe there's other things I could do that will be more sustainable. Yeah. It was more the second one, you know, I, I realized that, that the, the click arbitrage thing was, was not going to work. You know, it was too, uh, it was kind of too out there and, and, you know, it, it was never going to be sustainable. So, but it did open my eyes to, wow, there's all this other stuff online. Uh, and maybe there are other ways, right? And so what was your, what was your next phase there? You went through that and then you started looking around. What was like the next step for you? Yeah, so then I figured, okay, so what what can I do? Um, and I, you know, I wasn't a world's expert at anything. Um, I didn't have a product, um, and I figured, you know, I've always been a pretty creative person. So I figured I'd, uh, and I found, of course, Amazon where they had all these books, everybody had all these books. There were people who were uploading books and selling them and making money. <laughs> so I just said, well, you know, what the hell, I'll become a writer. Uh, and so that's what I did. I, just, I started, I just started, you know, writing some stuff and, and, and started slow. I wrote uh, a couple of nonfiction books in the uh, dog market. It was um, uh, uh, raw dog food. It was, a, it was a raw dog food book and, a, and also how to get your puppy to go to sleep. <laughs> Jen, of course, knew nothing about it when I started, but I, I did a little bit of research and, and ended up writing, you know, a 20,000 word ebook on both of those subjects and, and uploaded them. And, and, you know, I actually started making a little bit of money. I mean, you know, not a lot. I mean, probably two, three hundred dollars a month, something like that, uh, on these books. And so, you know, uh, off I went. So I did that for probably four years. I wrote 12 nonfiction books, uh, mostly in the sort of, uh, minimalism declutter space. Uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> I've got a title called the joy of less, uh, there's another one called Finding Simplicity. Uh, I also did a couple of other things. I've, I've got one called Clobbering the Procrastination Monster. <laughs> uh, and so uh, that's what I did. I, I started selling, you know, writing and, and uploading and selling ebooks on Amazon. And so your approach to that was maybe there are topics that I could create content that people already like that's already in demand, or it was also part of it was like these are topics that I'm interested in. Like, what was your well, approach? Well, both. A little of both. Um, you know, I wanted to find something that I was, you know, at least mildly interested in so that I could, you know, uh, spend hours and hours and hours researching and writing about it and not driving yourself crazy, right? Um, <clears throat> so, uh, and, and again, you know, I'm uh, not being the world's expert on anything. I needed something that I could research and, and, and find some, some information, enough information about to be able to, you know, write a coherent ebook about, uh, kind of thing, you know, and this was, uh, this was a side hustle for you. And you said you did this for how many years where you were doing like these, this about, ebook public? about four, four or five years, something like that. Mm -hmm. And, and did it ever, was it, did it ever grow into something more than just like a kind of a marginal income uh, side income stream or? Well, I, I think the most I made selling ebooks uh, on Amazon was uh, like 2,500 bucks in, in a month. That's, that's not bad. So it was never, it's not bad. I mean, you, you talk to a lot of people and they go, wow, that's really good. You know, um, you know, but having said that it was never, uh, it was never a full-time gig. No. And so this is what you're doing for a while. Then what happened, what happened next? Well, so then, I mean, that's just the thing is that I could see where it was going to be really difficult, especially writing about the things I was writing about. Um, Oh, let me back up a minute. So that so I decided uh, I just had to because uh, you, you know I was writing all these nonfiction books. I just had to try a novel, 
right? <laughs> so I became a novelist briefly. Uh, and I, I wrote about an 80,000 word action adventure novel, uh, which I launched and it fell completely flat on its face. And I, I think I've made, you know, probably, I don't know, maybe I've made 500 bucks over the last couple of years on the damn thing. So anyway, so that was, you know, that was kind of the, uh, you know, sort of the end of the, of the writing. I just, I just came to the realization that I wasn't going to be able to make the kind of money that I wanted to make just writing and uploading these, you know, short nonfiction ebooks or, or even, and the other thing was that, yeah, the, you know, with the novel thing, that's a whole other kettle of fish, uh, very competitive. And, uh, you know, and it just seemed like there ought to be a, a better, easier, you know, more functional way to, to make, the kind of money I wanted to make online. And so where did that, where did that thinking lead you? So again, you know, I, I didn't have a product. I, I, what I did is I went out and started taking a bunch of courses, right? Uh, I spent a bunch of money on a, on a bunch of different courses. Uh, most notably was Ryan Levesque's uh, Ask Method uh, and launched a couple of, uh, of products in the, uh, self-publishing space, which is what I kind of knew about from writing the books. Um, and, uh, but, you know, and I could see that there was potential. I could see that, you know, I, mean, I knew other people that were making money uh, doing that kind of thing. Uh, you know, creating a product, a course, or, or, or some sort of product, and, and, and then, you know, marketing it um, through paid ads or with, uh, with something like your influencer marketing and that kind of thing. Uh, and the, the products that I, that I created, I, I did a couple of little courses. I did a course on, on decluttering and I did a course on self-publishing. Uh, and neither of those courses after, you know, after, <laughs> after spending literally thousands of dollars on, on these courses like Ryan Lodex and we're trying to figure out how to, how to market the things properly. Um, I was just not, it was just not working. Um, so, so it sounds like you were obviously you're, you're somebody who's, who is driven by, well, there, there's, it sounds like part of this is, is a drive that you want to be able to create money online and maybe do this in a, a bigger, more full fledged way. And that that's kind of where it started. You experimented with the things that seemed like with well, at least with ebook publishing, it was like, okay, well, that's something I can wrap my head around. I can do this, and it it got to a point where it, it generated decent revenue for you, but not not like quit your job revenue, and and then you you joined some courses, including Ryan's, and you went through it. You developed a course from that, like some products from that, and they just went went nowhere basically. So you invested in, invested money and probably months of time, I would guess, doing something like this. And so I mean. Probably two years worth. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you 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 tried. You gave it a, a fair fair shake, and and so when was this about the time? Then after that, you said about two years where we first connected. Then, and that's where I ran into you. That's correct. So wa- walk me through that story, like behind the scenes, like what you were thinking, I guess, when you first connected with me, or how we first got in touch. Well, you know, I'm trying to remember, you know how you do that. It's like you you. You get some place and you look back and say, how did I get here? <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, it was, I, I had been doing the, the, the ask method stuff. Um, and I, was, I, I think what it was, I was trying to figure out, a, a, well, actually, no, back up, back up. Because what it was is that, is that I, is, here's what it was exactly. This is all coming back to me now. I was I was disappointed and frustrated with with the ask method stuff, and I had taken <clears throat> um, Matt Stone's um, email uh, email building for authors course, you know, like a year and a half, two years ago, uh, and I liked it. I mean, there was a lot of good stuff in there, you know, but it, it, but again, it just kind of you know tried this, tried that, and kind of went nowhere. Uh, and I was just totally frustrated with the, with the ask method. 
and don't get me wrong, because I think the ask method does have some some merit to it, but you know, I don't know. I just couldn't make it work. Um, so I, I was just sitting there one day, like, what the hell? You know, I'm going to go back through Matt's course because uh, it, it just seemed like there was some stuff there that that I didn't kind of totally glean out from you know when I started, um, which I did, and I, I remember distinctly. There's a point in, in that course where he started talking about, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do this stuff. Uh, and one of the ways uh, that, that he had participated in and he's seen other people make a lot of money on is by creating these bundles. And I sat straight up in my chair. And I, I mean, I literally, it's like, boom, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. And, and from that point on, I, you know, I, I shut down everything else. I, I quit listening to, to Ryan. Um, and, and I started, you know, I started working on this bundle thing. I just, it, it just came really clear to me, but like, like boom, that's, that's what I'm going to do. That, you know, I can, I can just see the, uh, you know, it just, I had this moment of clarity. I can just see the path, you know. And to give some clarity to the listener, when you say this, it basically, it sounds like Matt shared an idea about how you could you could create and sell a product that isn't really your own, but by creating a collection of other products and selling them all together. Yes. And, and he didn't have a ton of information in, in his, in that course about exactly how to do that. He was just mentioning, well, there are all these other ways, you know, you could look into this, you know, uh, and I just, it's just like, boom, God, that's it. Um, and so, I said, okay, that's what I'm going to do. And I started into this thing and I started, I started working on it. I started, um, you know, uh, researching uh, uh, the niche. And, and of course I said, well, okay, so the, what, what can I do a bundle on? Well, the first thing I, you know, the, the thing I know is the most about is self-publishing. So that's what I'll do. I'm, I'm going to do a bundle on self-publishing. And that was, um, that was November of last year. Uh, and so I spent from like November to probably March ish, somewhere in there, uh, it, it, you know, trying to, trying to build a site on, a, a, a build out a bunch of, a bunch of pages on this WordPress site. Uh, and did a bunch of research and had a, had a whole huge list of, of people already. Uh, and then, but, but wasn't quite sure what the next phase was and how, you know, how to go about it. And that's when, and I don't even really know, Tom, how I, I stumbled on you, but, but that's, that's when I, that's when I finally found the influencer marketing course mm. and signed up for that. That's right. Cause I, Cause I just needed, I just needed that, that one, I, you know, I had this all kind of, I had this idea and I knew it was going to work, but I just wasn't quite getting the rubber to the road. Um, and I figured, well, that's, you know, for whatever reason, I figured, you know, that, that influencer marketing is probably where this is going to go. Mm. Uh, and I, and I signed up for that course and, and, and consequently to your, to your mastermind group, and uh, and it was just kind of a to me it was kind of a, a perfect storm or a, or just you know the right the right info at the right time or <clears throat> you know when you're when you're ready the teacher appears or whatever you know whatever you want to call that but it just everything just sort of clicked into place and it, and, it, and here we are yeah all. and it's funny because like my influencer marketing method is not something that I promote or share a lot though I'm going to be fixing it in the future. But it was something where I'm like, I've had great results using this kind of process, being kind of um, methodical about how I think about the types of people I'd like to partner with or uh, maybe turn into maybe if, if I was able to connect with them and, and they'd be affiliates for something or promote something of mine or my clients. And to think about, uh, so it, it took me kind of, I developed that over the course of a few years doing this like full time, basically, like connecting with bloggers and podcasters and all this stuff and, and developing like a systematic approach to reaching out and connecting with people and staying top of mind and making sure that nobody falls through the cracks and stuff like that. And realizing that in a lot of ways, it's a relationship based approach to partnerships and things like that. And 
And so you basically took that and you ran with it. And what I love is that you implemented it like to a T. And I think the results are just absolutely outstanding because you started to you use that. Then you joined um, 100K Academy. So you joined like the, the, the mastermind that you mentioned and we got to work a little bit more closely together. But what I thought was really cool is you were already using, you were already implementing what you were learning in influencer marketing method. It was like this, the step-by-step strategy. It was more, I think you joined the mastermind more around the idea of like, how do I turn this into a business? And how do I, how do I make, figure out like, not just here's this method for getting partners and and getting them to promote and things like that. But where's the the business side of things is also where it sounded like you wanted some help on that. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. So I remember working together with you on that seeing, okay, you have this idea, this concept, you had already started the influencer marketing method. So you had already had, I don't know, maybe a dozen or, or two dozen people that you would kind of like contact and been in touch with and gotten like a soft yes from, but basically the 100 K Academy was essentially a three month program. And at the end of it, you launched, and I think this is what's so crazy is, yeah, you had actually started a long time ago, uh, you could say with, in, in November, but in terms of like, I think when we first connected, you were still pretty, you know, pretty much at the outset in a lot of ways. No, it's really true. I mean, I, again, I had the idea. I had, a, I had some of the pieces, but they were, they were that's all they were, was pieces. I, I, I didn't have them connected properly, right? I, uh, I didn't know quite how to, how to get, get the, you know, actually implement the damn thing and get it to work, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. Cause it's so, like, yeah, conceptually it's like, Oh, you get, you, you can figure out an idea, you know, I think from a conceptual level, pretty, pretty easily. It's like, okay, sell other people, other people's stuff. Or if you were doing like a course, it's like, here's this, this course and this topic and I'll get people who are interested in that to purchase. But implementing in a way that it is profitable is much more difficult. And there's a lot of, there's nuance and there's, there's the all these all of a sudden when you start doing something like this, there's a question like every minute. And what I thought was really cool working with you in this capacity, Carrie, was you were the kind of person who executed and you were like, you learned as you went, which I thought was really remarkable. Not everybody does that, but you did. Well, you, were you, like, you know, what was interesting to me too, is that, you know, we'd have these calls, these once a week calls, and it seemed like every week we'd launch into the call and I'd be, I'd be working on this, you know, the next phase of what, what I was doing. And we get on the call and it's like, and you start talking. It's like, well, that's exactly what I'm working on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, that's awesome. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Yeah. And it just, go, yeah, just, it, it, I, I love the story. And then, so, but let's give people some context too. You were able then to, you launched basically at the, the end of our three months together in 100K Academy after, after implementing stuff from influencer marketing method to get your partners and get your, you know, affiliates and, and, and that was a big piece of this business model. And then you, you know, 100K Academy is kind of focused on the launch and the business side of things on the back end. And you launched and what were, what happened? What was the results? Well, I, I just looked on, uh, on Thrive Card this morning to get those numbers. And the, the final numbers, the launch was one week. It was June 25th through July 2nd. And uh, we sold 1,781 bundles for a gross revenue of $79,010. That's awesome. I just think it's worth uh, letting that sink in a little bit. One week and you did, essentially you did 80, 80 grand, just, just shy of 80 grand. You, you could say 80 grand, yeah. So we'll, 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 we'll round up uh, for our sex. You gave this specific number, but it's so close to 80 grand. So 80 grand in one week, which is effectively what you did. You definitely did over 10, 10 grand a day, basically for that one week sale. So had you ever seen numbers like these before? Anything that you'd work on? <laughs> not even close. Not, not even remotely close. Uh, and it was, I tell you, it was pretty surreal to sit there on, the, on, on that Monday, the, the launch Monday, Monday afternoon, and, and refresh my PayPal account. And, you know, there's $8,000. It's like, wow. You know, and then... Oh, now there's ten thousand. Wait, now there's eighteen thousand dollars. Now that it's like, oh my god, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good feeling, isn't it? Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's wild. Yeah, I love that. I, I love it. I love that you not only discovered it, but you discovered it in like that this is possible and it can be done in such a big way and in in such a scalable way, which I think is what's really cool about InfoStack and what you've you've kind of what you yeah. what you started. And- that's the thing I'm really excited about now is that, uh, as you know, we've, we've, uh, we've, we're working currently on, on scaling this thing to the moon. Yeah. And I, I, and, and I, 
I want to talk about that in a second. I want to I want to come back to that that piece. But before we move on from this, I, I there's a couple things that I think are are worth asking you about or, or having your insights. So it sounded like some parts of it was like positive like positive surprise at how much things how how many sales were coming in, and and you didn't necessarily predict that going into it. I I I, I, I remember our conversations. I remember saying, "Hey, be conservative. Like, be you know, I always like to do things conservatively. I have low expectations. Do the work, but but just be conservative." So t- walk me through like your mindset when this all happened and this went down by the end well, of the week. I, I literally had no idea. You know what I mean? It's the first time I'm doing it. I, I was confident, you know, I was pretty sure it was going to work to some degree, but to what degree I had no idea. Uh, and I mean, I had run projections that said, you know, $5,000. And I had also run projections that said $150,000. You know, as you can, you can play with the numbers and make them say anything you want, you know? Uh, so I, I had literally no idea what was going to happen. Um, and so it, it, it exceeded, it definitely exceeded my expectations. That's awesome. And then at the end of this, so you sold, you did about 80 grand, about over 10 grand a, a day for the seven day campaign. At the end of it, I thought it was kind of it was fun because you launched right at the end of our program, uh, 100K Academy, and that that cohort, that uh, the the student cohort that that you were part of. And what was really cool was, like, I was like on the last day of our our uh, program, you it was like kind of a wrap up of everything that everybody had learned and like what the next steps were for everybody. And what was really cool is everybody kind of kind of got to see your launch live in the group and go behind the scenes with yeah, you. It, it- it, it just, we, t- I don't know. It was, it was pure coincidence, but we, we timed it just perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> and then what I thought was, so that was, that was fun. That was just kind of like, I thought like, what a great like learning point for everybody who's involved to see this happen in real time. Um, because not everybody gets to like a lot of times the stuff, like in fact, many of the people in the group, uh, many of our students are, are getting ready to launch now, you know, months later. And that's, that's the nature is sometimes these things take longer. But it was really cool to see you launch, see the results, see them come in, realize this is real money, this is real profit, and it's the basis of a legitimate business enterprise. And so now I want to ask you, a couple things happened after that. And one of those was you, had ha- you were fully full-time employees. This was a side hustle for you at the time, which again is pretty remarkable. What happened next? I, I did go in, I, let me back up, and right after the launch, I was, you know, I was totally jacked, right? I mean, it's like, wow. Uh, but I was like, eh, you know, and, and the, you know, the the object, the, the the goal, of course, of any of this is to is to get me out of my job. Uh, that that was my that was my ultimate goal. Um, you know, in fact, I don't know if this is if this is what you're talking about, but. I have a whiteboard in my office and uh, in January of this year, I had written down some goals on that whiteboard and let me walk in there and tell you that the goals are by December 30th of 2018, is have info stack running smoothly, have three stacks launched by December 30th, make $100,000 minimum gross income, and leave my job by August 1st, 2018. So we're, we are on track for those first three. And on August 1st, uh, this just three weeks ago, I went in and I, I resigned from my job. That's got to be wild. What was that feeling like to, what, the, and what's your, like, what's your feeling, the perspective on it from, this is something you did basically with your own hands. You kind of created this from, from scratch out of nothing, produce this kind of, this kind of revenue and this kind of profit. And then realizing, wait a second, this is probably more like, I guess, here's a question for you. Was that more in a week than you'd ever made in a, in a month before? Um, or, or give some context oh. to that. Like, Oh, no question. Yeah. Yeah. No question at all. Yeah. And, and so then to be able to say, okay, well, I have this job. It's obviously there's some certainty that comes with having a job, but you made the leap. A lot of people are very scared to make that leap, but you did it. So walk me through kind of your mindset when you, you did that and how it felt. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, when, when I first, um, 
run up to the launch, right? I was, I was thinking, well, you know, should I? And I was like, I don't know. You know, I mean, the, there is that security there, you know. Um, and uh, I, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. But then, you know, we started working on scaling this thing. And, you know, I mean, it's a lot of work. <laughs> uh, so I, I was basically working two full-time jobs. Uh, and so, uh, you, you know, it just got to be where uh, this is killing me. Uh, and, and, you know, there's no question in my mind that, that it's a, it's a sustainable business. And I mean, that to me, that's the most exciting thing about this whole thing is that, is that this is not just a, you know, uh, make a bunch of money once and, and, and call it good. You know, this is a, this is a real sustainable business. And so that being the case, uh, I, you know, after about three weeks or three or four weeks of, of trying to do both, uh, I just, I just came to the conclusion that look, you know, I mean, what the hell? <laughs> and, what, and the thing of it is that the, the job I had, I was selling commercial alarm systems for ADT. Uh, and it's, a uh, you know, it's a, it's a, just a grunt cold call, uh, you know, uh, I mean, you, you know, I was telling me what you, I could go out and in two weeks, I could go out and find six more of the jobs just like this. You know what I mean? It's not like it's some, you know, huge career thing that I've invested all this time and energy and, and, you know, uh, and, and bottom line is I hated the damn thing. So, I mean, what the hell? I just figured let's, let's take the leap. And, and, you know, if, if for some reason it doesn't work out, I can go get another job and get, you know, one of these cold call sales jobs that you mm-hmm. want to want. And I think what's really cool though, is you, pr- you proved the, you proved the business model, you proved the model, you sh- showed that it worked, you did it once and you did it while you're bootstrapping, you know? And so it's like, yeah, of course, w- w- with that in mind, I think, and I remember having this conversation with you, I was like, there's kind of two ways to take this. I think one way is you could continue it as like a side hustle and you do like four of these things a year. And it's like, that's a pretty good additional income and, you know, to supplement something or even it could actually be its own, if you even, you could actually, that actually could still be where you quit your job and still do like four of these a year. And you probably actually make, you, you probably actually make really good money doing that. You could actually, yeah, you could actually live on that probably. Yeah. And then, and then all of a sudden, but then the other option is, well, what would it look like to build this into a multi-million dollar business and to, to really ramp it up and to approach it that way? And so what, like, I guess I'm, I'm curious because I remember having this conversation and I thought it was kind of interesting because I think a lot of people I interact with are, are, are particularly interested in like a lifestyle business in a lot of ways. M- many are, and, but not all. And you, I think were just like, no, option two, you know, is the, is the thing that I'm, I'm interested in. So t- tell me that, like, why, why approach this as something to grow into a multi-million dollar business versus say, just continue this as like this kind of like nice lifestyle type business. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the thing is that, you know, I've never been uh, the one, you know, one of those guys who who wants to make a million dollars in a half an hour doing nothing, you know, like like you see the guy standing in front of his family with the girls in the bikinis, you know, uh, telling you, you, you know, here's this one trick thing and you can make all this money, you know, uh, I want to make the money, don't get me wrong, but, uh, you know, but I'm definitely... To me, to have a, a, a real world sustainable business, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to put in the work, uh, and so I, I, I'm not afraid to do that. So you know, I'm I'm willing to to put in many many hours and 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 you know do the you know just get in the trenches and, and go to work to make it work. Um, so that's you know that that's kind of the way I approach it, and 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 the other thing is that. Um, the reason I wanted to scale it is that I have no spring chicken and, and, um, and, you know, back in the 2008 era, uh, when the big meltdown happened, I, I was in the real estate business and I had, uh, I don't know if you know this or not, Tom, uh, but I had, uh, a bunch of things going on in the real estate business. And a, a buddy of mine and I, a partner of mine and I were, were attempting to do some developing and, and build these, uh, uh, small multi-unit uh, um, 
condos, build and build and sell out these these uh, you know like five year condo buildings. Uh, and we had purchased a bunch of land and and spent a bunch of money and and we're rezoning a bunch of stuff. And I mean, it was just we we were you know just elbow deep in this thing, and the bottom fell out of the real estate business. <laughs> and uh, I had to sell my rental houses. I had to sell my my the house where I lived uh, with my wife, and and uh, you know I basically tubed it <laughs> in 2008. So uh, you know there I was, uh, 60 years old, and or so I wasn't 60 then. I'm making myself older than I am, uh, but um, you know I, I was to the point where I, I basically lost everything uh, and I had to start over, uh, and so to me. And that's what I ultimately what I've been looking for is something where I can build it up, and then and then you know, possibly sell it, and have that be my retirement. So that that's that's my ultimate goal. I love it. Well, Carrie, I would say what a, it's I actually did not know that backstory to that piece, and it's like man, I, I think the for as long as I've known you and that we've been working together, I think the thing that always struck me is. Um, amazing is your ability to kind of just do the work and get things done. And I think hearing your backstory, it's like, man, not only that, but you, you also have the mindset, the, like the absolute right mindset to say, I'm not just going to like totally give up on this stuff. I want to continue to, to search, even though you've been maybe to the bottom, like in a lot of ways that other people can't, I think, relate to. Uh, it's just remarkable to, to still have that drive and that passion to do it. So again, just kudos to you. And so now next steps with InvoStack, you're rolling out a bunch of campaigns here across a multitude of industries and niches. And where do you see this in, in 12? Where would you like to see this in, in 12, 12 to 18 months? Well, um, I, I think the goal is to, is to basically do one a month um, with, with some flash sales, some shorter flash sales in between. Uh, and, uh, I'd like to, um, like to try and, and, uh, gross, you know, maybe low six figures for each launch, uh, may not be able to make that for each one, but, uh, you know, so that, you know, doing that, that would put us, uh, you know, um, o- you know, over a million, uh, in, in gross revenue for, for the next 12 months. That's, you know, that's, I think that's the goal. I love it. Well, Carrie, where can people reach out to connect with you, find you and check out some of these info stacks that you have coming up? Yeah. My, uh, my, uh, email address is Carrie at infostack.io. Awesome. Well, Carrie, thank you so much for being on in the trenches. Loved hearing your story, man. Perfect. Thank you. And that wraps up another broadcast of in the trenches. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please do me a favor and go to tomworkus.com slash iTunes. That's T-O-M-M-O-R-K-E-S dot com slash iTunes and leave a rating and review for In the Trenches. Not only do I read and appreciate every review, but it helps spread the word of this podcast and allows me to continue to get on great guests. So thank you for your support and I'll catch you on the next broadcast of In the Trenches.